So, um, I'm just going to start right at the top. The changing in the seasons brings a change in me. The changing in the seasons brings a change in me. And then in the song, they talk about nature's possibilities. And then the title of the song is December Makes Me Feel This Way. So how many of you would say that December rolls around and you, and, and the holidays roll around and you do sense a change in the way you feel? How many of you feel that? Okay, so that's a lot of you. Um, and, and I do too. And this concept that the changing in the seasons brings a change in me, and it talks about nature's possibilities, which is great, because last week we talked about divine evolution, and that you're constantly evolving. Well, nature constantly evolves. And nature, as far as we know, is not self-conscious to the degree that it can get in its own way. You, not so lucky. <laughs> so we can get in our way. But nature itself has to just keep evolving. So when nature has a season that it's suddenly exploding into, it cannot help but touch us. We are in touch with everything in the universe as it explores, as it explodes, as it expands. So it makes perfect sense. This song makes perfect sense to me. That there is something inherent in nature in the way it just makes me feel. Now, I'm from the East Coast. How many of you are from the East Coast? So, okay, that's like half the room, great. So, it's a different season in, on the, in the East Coast as it is in the West Coast. At least it used to be. <laughs> right? Because, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, it's gotten very cold here, and my family back there is like, oh, we're having a beautiful Christmas. It's like 80. I was like, it's 80 in Philadelphia? Because it's 40 in California. And my aunt was like, yep, global warming. <laughs> and whether it's global warming or not, I don't really, well, I do care, but it's not really important to this talk. Um, because really the case is things keep switching and changing. And the question is, are, are, we, are we going with it or are we fighting it? Are we fighting the changes we're feeling or are we allowing them to change us. And I don't mean change us into something else, to just change through us, revealing something that's already, as, as uh, Mary said, inherently there, right? So today the title of my talk is Baby, It's Cold Outside. <laughs> so when this thing changes, this, this temperature changes here in California, it's kind of unexpected. So we drove to the desert on uh, Friday. First of all, we had the most amazing Christmas caroling. How many of you were there? Raise your hand. Right. There were close to 70 people Christmas caroling. And our neighbors, then, uh, Kevin got an email from one of the neighbors saying, what was the name of that church? Because they were like, what church is Christmas caroling? Um, and I said, well, it's the not church that's Christmas caroling. Um, but, but, like almost 70 people at my house singing Christmas carols, rehearsing Christmas carols that we literally threw out the window the minute we left the house. <laughs> and then we walked around the neighborhood singing Christmas carols. And there were some pictures. Those of you that were there know that I, at least this touched me profoundly. There was a, a, a man who came out and then called his daughter out and then just put his daughter in his arms and stood there while, we all, while 70 people sang to the two of them. And it was so beautiful. To, to, to know what was going on, that we were bringing so much love to the neighborhood. Um, but here's the other part. It was beautiful. It got really beautiful for us to go Christmas caroling. I had scarves and hats already. I didn't put any of them on because it was beautiful. So the whole idea of this changing weather, um, when we drove to the desert, uh, we got out of the car, we left right after Christmas caroling, we got to the desert at one in the morning. Now, usually when you go to Palm Desert, it's, you know, 70 degrees, 60 degrees maybe. It was 40 degrees. And we got out of the car, and I swear, I looked around and I thought, I'm looking at all these cactuses, and I'm like, I'm like I bet you're just as shocked. <laughs> and I did. I was, I was thinking about all these plants and thinking, what must they think? You know, it's like, where did they plant me? Right? But you know what? We think that way too. Things happen in our life and they're like, where did I just plant myself? This is not what I was expecting. So 
On Friday, before Christmas caroling, Kevin and I went to, uh, we take the kids every single year, every single year, we take Will and Nora to, um, to, to, to talk to Santa uh, at the Grove. How many of you have been to the Santa at the Grove? Because that's the real Santa at the Grove. <laughs> and, and so we went to the Grove to see the real Santa, and we've been doing it now for 13 years, and we have pictures every year. Well, when we got to the Grove, and, and we're like, cheerful, and it's very busy, busy time of year, but we're still really cheerful, and we get to the Grove, and I, I parked, and the kids get in line with Kevin, and I come down, and we're like right at the front of the line, I'm like, I am so blessed. I have the consciousness of everything flowing perfectly. <laughs> and I get in line, and the, the girl comes over and goes, can I have your name? I go, yes, and we give her her name. She goes, okay, so here's your number. It's about a four-hour wait. Now that was three o'clock, and that would have taken me one hour into Christmas caroling. And so I said to the lady, I said, oh, I said, I said, no, we, we really can't wait. Could, <laughs> I really said this, I said, could you go tell Santa we're here? I, 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 said, I said, because Santa's gonna, gonna remember us, and he's not gonna want us to miss this. And this girl just looked at me and she went, no. And, and all things are going through my mind, like, do you know who I am? Do you have any idea who you're saying this to? And Kevin just looked at me and went, that was a no, let's go. <laughs> so he left, and we didn't get to see Santa. So then I decided, Kevin had to do a little Christmas shopping, and I stood there <laughs> just going, my life is unfolding perfectly. <laughs> This is exactly what I am I'm, this is exactly right for my life right now. So I took a f selfie of the four of us at the Christmas cottage with exit right above us, the exit sign. I said, this is our new Christmas card. We are now exiting the tradition of having to see Santa every year. And this is our new idea. No, don't say aw. I did enough of that. So, we take this picture, and, and we're thinking, and I was thinking about it, and later on, uh, it, during the day, Kevin said, are you disappointed about not seeing Santa? I said, you know, no, ironically. The kids have been telling us for years they don't want to go. <laughs> in fact, one year, Will did something in the picture that destroyed the picture. It was a, a certain type of move that he did, using his hands a certain way, that, destroyed the picture and nobody noticed until we got home. And I was like, Will, look what you're doing in this picture. He goes, that's totally accidental. It was just the way my hands landed. I was like, mm-hmm. So I had to Photoshop his arm out of the picture. So, and I know, oh my God, you're all watching at home. You're all in Palm Desert watching, so good morning to you all. You probably just woke up. Yes, Will, you can talk to me later about how I shared that story. Uh, so, so anyway, back to the story. What I want to talk about this morning is this understanding of the unexpected and traditions and habits, and Mary set me up perfectly. We have so many habits in our minds and traditions that are so important to us, and I'm not saying traditions aren't important. I, I think traditions are amazing, and I love traditions. But sometimes the unexpected comes along and wants you to go with it. And I think very often, especially at this time of year, we get so caught up in this is how it has to be. This is how we do it. We do it like this every year. This is how it has to go. And then when it doesn't go that way, we are, as Mary said, focusing on the problem of why didn't it go this way when there's this gorgeous gift waiting to be given to us. And the gift is that each one of us is this nature constantly evolving, and nature very often wants us to go in a different direction. And what a great time this year to have spent the entire year living our truth. And I can only tell you that our theme for next year is gonna blow your socks off, because that's what it's meant to do. <laughs> to really take you in a, a, a more expanded understanding of who you really are. So, so the unexpected. Are you willing to live in the unexpected to the degree that your life becomes the life of God because that's who you are and you're not trying to inform it what it's supposed to be and just stay open to whatever's going on, to whatever wants, wants to go on. Caroline Kennedy said this about her mother. She said, 
that her mother taught her this. You have to have the courage to do the unexpected and not give a damn what anyone thinks. So, can you stand right in your life and say, I am willing to live the unexpected and not give a damn what anyone thinks, including myself? Because that's the big one. And I know for myself, I think there are these traditions that I'm supposed to be. There's a, there's a conversation going on right now about my one-man show, whether or not I will do, do a certain por portion of it, whether it's appropriate or not. And I have to tell you, um, you know, my one-man show, Sissy Boy, that I'm in rehearsal for right now, there's a section that's a little risque. And it's, it's well, it's a lot risque. <laughs> and, but it's so important. So I called Reverend Rita yesterday and I said, I said, Rita, I'm gonna read you what I'm, my, my script and tell you what you think. And when I finished reading it to her, she kind of was crying and she said, she said, uh-huh, why would you even consider? And it's so great to have students that become my teachers. And there's so many in this room and I see you all. Are you willing to really speak authentically from your heart and if you are willing to speak authentically from your heart and not care what anyone else thinks, I guarantee you, you will be doing much more for this universe than worrying about the handful that may have a problem with you or whatever it is you have to express. So the unexpected. Sometimes the unexpected takes you right back around to what you expected. Little story. So growing up as a child in Philadelphia, our tradition was to decorate the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. Anybody else? Is it just, okay, good, right? Three of us, great. So every year, our family, we had the Christmas tree there, but it wasn't decorated until Christmas Eve. Well, when I met Kevin, and I did that every year, until I met Kevin, and Kevin said, what? That's impossible. I need that decorated at Thanksgiving. <laughs> I was like, what? No, that's, that's my whole tradition. He goes, and that's my tradition. I said, all right, then we're looking somewhere between Thanksgiving and Christmas. <laughs> and so we actually ended up somewhere between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Except, watch, Kevin's going to get in the car and drive home and decorate it right now. Except that this year, we got so busy, it didn't get decorated. So it's sitting there, it has a few little things on it, but the decorations are just waiting. And I just thought to myself, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> just gonna wait and see how long it takes for this tree to get decorated, or at least the time to be scheduled, not that I don't decorate it. So Friday comes the Christmas caroling, and Kevin says to me, um, we got, I said to Kevin, I said, you know, the Christmas tree is not decorated, and all these people are coming over for Christmas. He said, I don't see a time to decorate it, do you? I said, I think it's Christmas Eve. He said, I think this year, we're probably gonna have to do it on Christmas Eve because we don't get back from the desert till the 23rd, and that's the Christmas Eve service. I mean, no, it's not, that, that's, that's, it's a wonderful life, so I'm gonna be here with It's a Wonderful Life, and by the way, this Wednesday, we will be showing It's a Wonderful Life, and here to talk to you about the film will be Frank Capra's son. So he is coming towards the end of our viewing of it to sit up here with me and tell you what it was like for his father to direct that movie. So. Just a little tidbit to let you know. Um, so, so at the end of our discussion, I said to Kevin, I said, so Christmas Eve. And he, just, he was just like, oh, I'm sure that's really upsetting you. I was like, I was like no, I think it's going to be really fun to do it on Christmas Eve. And actually, we're all kind of in it now. We're like, oh, that'll be fun. So it may have taken, I've been with Kevin 26 years. It may have taken 26 years for the expected to turn into the unexpected and to come back around to the expected. But the universe always knows what it's doing. <laughs> so my question to you today is, what are you doing? What do you think is expected of you? But if you really took the time to step back and ask yourself, does this serve me? You may find a resounding no. You may think it's expected of you, but it may not be your best choice. So just think about that for a second. What in your life wants to come forward in such a way that what you expect maybe needs to get pushed to the side? I know that I live my life expecting a lot, and I do. I have great expectations 
of life and for life. I also understand that expectation is not so much me telling the universe what I want to happen, but the fact that I stand in expectation as expectation, expecting only the highest and the best and trusting that whatever comes, I am equal to and therefore is the highest and the best. Sometimes it's a, it's a young girl dressed in a, in a villager outfit saying no. <laughs> and sometimes it's a busy schedule that says, now you can have Christmas Eve your way. So what is it for you? Where are you stuck in some tradition or some habit that's no longer serving you? So Christmas season, the reason why I asked you at the top of the service whether or not um, you finished your shopping, Christmas time can be very stressful for a lot of people. Just go into the malls. People get very stressful at, at Christmas time, trying to get the exact right present, the exact right gift, trying to just get them done, trying to get everything finished. And, and whew. when I was driving here this morning, I thought, the only thing I have to give today, the only real message I have to give today is a message of beingness that may allow everybody to just drop any anxiety, anything that's going on this holiday season that might be getting in the way of them really enjoying the holiday season. Sometimes we try so hard to make the holiday season work this way that we get through the holidays and we're like, oh my God, thank God they're over. Anybody else ever have that feeling? Suzanne, of course not. But. <laughs> But, but I know, I mean, I generally don't have that feeling, but I, you know, I, I sit up in my office and listen to people talk about this. So I wanna say something about the unexpected. The unexpected shifts the mind. The unexpected shifts the mind. If you're willing to live in a mind that can walk through your day saying, I know nothing, now what can I know? See how that shifts everything, even about something like a holiday. And it's not just Christmas, it's Hanukkah, it's Kwanzaa, it's all the holidays we share, this one thing. So, yesterday, the unexpected, we went to see Star Wars. How many of you saw Star Wars yet? Okay, it is spectacular, and I'm so, sad right now that I can't talk about it because I can't talk about it because how many of you are going to see it? Yeah, so I can't talk about it, right? So, um, but I'm not going to talk about it, but everybody was just so excited to see this movie in my household and I was like, I'm like, I, I, I don't remember this, I mean, I remember seeing them, and Kevin was just like, please don't even talk about Star Wars if you're not gonna really talk about Star Wars. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm going, so, so I went. It was unbelievably amazing. It really was, it was just unbelievably amazing. But, talk about the unexpected, so we're sitting and everybody says, what time should we get there to get in line? I say, the movie starts at 3.45, and let's get there like 3.15. <laughs> oh, sure, I want you to remember that reaction in a minute, ready? And I say, 3.15, and Kevin's like, really, James? And so Kevin says, we're leaving at 2. He's like, okay. So we're leaving at 2 to go to Star Wars at 3.45. The movie's 10 minutes away. So if we say 2, it means we usually leave at 2.30. So we left around 2.30 which was good. Um, Nora was getting dressed. So, um, <laughs> oh, I am in so much trouble when I get back to the desert. It'll be like 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, um, we get there. There's no one there. It's Palm Desert. Most of them probably don't know what Star Wars is. <laughs> so, we get there and there's, so Marcy Welland, our director of operations here, Marcy Welland texts me from, she goes in first and she goes, it's a 500 seat theater and there are six of us here. <laughs> literally. So we got the best seats in the house, right there in the middle. There literally were, by the time the movie started, maybe 100 people in this 500 seat theater. Wait, no, this is a safe, you're, I told you you're gonna really regret that response you had. Because when we left, uh, we asked, I said, 
is it always like this? And the person at the box office said, every show has been sold out, packed, you couldn't get in, except this one show. <laughs> My life unfolds perfectly at all times. Now, you may say to yourself, really, James, you think your mind created that experience. Damn straight. <laughs> I do. I absolutely do. And it was totally unexpected, but not by me. I actually expected it. And I'm good with the unexpected, too. So, where do you stand? Where do you stand in your life when you look at the things in your life that maybe aren't working out exactly the way you want them to? It might be that you're expecting something that the universe has, as Mary said, a present right here waiting to hand you. But you're too busy going, this is how it has to be, this is how I want it to be, this is how it's been for all these years. My grandmother did it this way, my mother did it this way, and I will do it this way. And even when my children come along and say, we don't want to do it, too bad. <laughs> this is how we did it. And then probably, because we have ingrained it in them, they will be saying to their children 20 years from now, this is how my father did it, so this is how you'll do it. We had to go through it. <laughs> and at some point, it just takes us standing in our own body saying, enough. Perhaps rushing to the grove, getting dressed, putting on makeup, for Nora. <laughs> Right, getting a color pattern that we're all looking good in to sit next to the red guy. Maybe that really wasn't the best use of our time, but was it? It was, because it really brought me some great resolve. And part of it just was, and then I had a dream. I had a dream. <laughs> then I had a dream, and in the dream, someone, I don't remember the person, you know how those dreams are, you don't remember, really remember who it is that's talking to you, but it's probably everybody you know. And someone in the dream said to me, you know, you really are controlling, James. <laughs> in my dreams. I dream this stuff. <laughs> and it's like, you really are controlling. And, and in my dream, I'm like, why would you say that? I am so open and giving, and I, I allow things to unfold perfectly. And when I woke up, I turned to Kevin and I said, I said, I just had this dream that someone told me I was controlling. And the look on his face. <laughs> I just thought, there's not even a debate here. I'm not even going to argue this at all. So my mind clearly, my subconscious is clearly saying to me, get with the program, buddy. You know, you know that life does unfold perfectly. You don't have to control so much of it. You can let it just unfold. But, as you said last week, get in line so that it takes you with it. And you're not over here saying, no, we're holding on here. It has to be this way. So, so that's my life. How's your life? Awesome. Great. I'm glad I gave this talk for me. So, so, living as love. You can't live as love and be working so hard to tell love what it's supposed to be. You have to be willing, if you're going to say, I live as love, which is what this month is all about, you have to be willing to love yourself first and foremost. Baby, it's cold outside. You know what happens when it's cold outside? There's this feeling that we get. It's just a little chill that goes through our bodies. And what's our first reaction? Put something on. Cover ourselves up. So I did a little research into the cold. And in fact, you can withstand great amounts of cold. Your body can. Your body can. Your mind, how many of you have ever done this? Your mind can literally inform your body, just adapt, just adapt, and then you're not so cold. The cold actually stimulates the environment. Did you know that? The cold actually stimulates the ground. The cold actually stimulates the energy that we all are. So 
baby, it's cold outside. You know, Rita and Patrick said, we gave that talk last year. Who's singing it? I said, no one's singing it. It's just cold. <laughs> outside. So I leave you with this concept. Stop putting so much on. I think it's time to take some more off. Just keep stripping away this stuff, whether it's traditions that no longer serve you, habits that no longer serve you, relationships that no longer serve you, anything that no longer serves you. Just strip it off. It might be a little cold. It might be a little chilly. But you know what that's doing? It's invigorating you. It is reminding you that you come from this life force. You come from this creativity. You come from this stuff. As Ernest Holmes says, you come from the fire in the belly to take it and use it and live it and be it. I live as truth. We get to the end of this year. Did I live my whole year as truth? I did pretty good. There were times when I, I forgot. But for the most part, I lived my truth. And next year, I'm going to live the next thing and the year after that, and the year after that. All meaning, I live as God. So, it's time to strip it away. It's time to literally go out in the snow and enjoy the chill. It's time to really step into our lives from a place of courting the unexpected. Not just being okay with the unexpected, but court it. Come on, show me something new. Show me something exciting. Show me something that I don't have in my head yet. Show me something that I haven't seen before. Show me someone I haven't been before. I don't have to be the same person tomorrow. I get to choose who I am. Troward talks about it in your personality. You created your personality. If there's a part of your personality you don't like, dump it. Pick another personality. When we see people and go, oh my God, I'll have what she's having. Don't just have what she's having, be it. Because we get to. That's who we are. We are this creative substance, this creative energy. And if we court the unexpected, then we leave our minds open to be anything we want to be. And if we just let ourselves be anything we want to be, we will find ourselves smack dab in the middle of God. And from there, anything and everything is possible. So five days till this great big holiday we all celebrate. You got five days to strip it all off and just allow yourself to be your natural, perfect self, because that's who you are. Namaste. <laughs>